Hi everybody, I'm Shelly, and if you are new here, thank you so much, welcome to my channel. I don't have anything on my face today, but I got a request recently to give a little review or give my thoughts on the new Fenty Beauty eavesdrops, and I was mildly curious about this, but not like fully bought into buying it. I have a, a number of Fenty products, and I don't reach for it, and I don't, I don't know why. I think I got like caught up in the hype of it. And when the request came in to give my thoughts on the Skin Ease, what is it called? Ease Drops. When the request came in to, to give my thoughts on the Ease Drops, I'm like, you know what? I actually really like tinted moisturizers and foundation serums. So I gathered up some of the ones that I've been using recently and I didn't realize how completely redonkulous this collection is. I'm not somebody who has been full on into full coverage concealers. I just think as ladies of a certain age, you find that it just really settles into places that maybe you don't want to. And then you have to find the right primer to work with it. And sometimes our lifestyles are just not conducive to a whole bunch of multi-step products, which I think is probably the reason why I like the, the tinted foundations and the, or the tinted moisturizers and the foundation serums. It's like they're a two in one. I've got dry aging skin. so. It kind of feels like a skin treatment along with a little bit of smoothing and evening. And that's probably one of my biggest complaints is I do have some discoloration. I do get kind of splotchy depending on how much color I have. I've never had perfectly smooth, clear, radiant skin. If you have, I'm ridiculously jealous right now. I would say these three are probably my most favorite right now. So knowing that I like these, if you like any of these products, let's see how this works with it. I'm gonna go grab damp beauty sponge because I forgot. So we're gonna do one side with a brush and one side with a sponge and we'll be right back. Probably could have, am I crooked now? Maybe not so bad. I probably could have turned my camera off when I went to go do that. And instead we'll just edit. We'll edit and pretend that it went went quickly. Okay, I'll grab a foundation brush here too. Should I use a primer? Hmm, I don't want to do anything too glowy. I'm gonna go back and use this uh, Physicians Former Formula Butter Believe It Putty Primer. This is supposed to be a dupe for the Poreless Putty Primer. I don't think so. It, this feels very hydrating to me to begin with. So I don't know that I get the whole like poreless part. It just feels very emollient. I gotta tell you guys, I have not been eating well the last couple weeks. And I also have not been working out as much as I should. I've just been just really focused. And I and you guys probably get it, you know, when you try to do too much, something something gives, right? You have to give up on something to get other things to get accomplished. And every day I make those choices. So it's like, you know, the fun things like YouTube, sometimes not so fun things if I'm avoiding doing something I really don't wanna do. Like, let's go do yard work. You know, obviously the the day to day is the work, and those are the that's the priorities because that's the the paid stuff. And then I've got the school stuff, and I am in my first term of going back to school, and I've done pretty darn well actually grade wise, way better than the '90s when I went to college the first time. I and I have one class left in this term. I'm a good probably six weeks early to finishing the term. I'm doing this where I do one class at a time and I get through it as quickly as I can and then I go on to the next one. So I might be able to pick up one more class that is scheduled to be next term, but I might be able to do it this term. Anyway, I've, 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 I've been not getting things done. Some things. And what has kind of given lately is making good food choices and then working out. I haven't been doing that as much as I should. Since I was picking this up, I decided to go and pick up a few other things. So we'll kind of go through some of that other stuff that I picked up at the same time. Some new stuff, some things that I've been curious about. Probably spent more money than I needed to. Okay, so I'm gonna shake this up really well. This is, again, is the Fenty Beauty by Rihanna Ease Drops Blurring Skin Tint. I got it in shade, I think it says shade nine. <clears throat> So I'm going to start with a little bit on the back of my hand on top of all that other tinted moisturizer and stuff. And this is one that I picked up, you know, online. I didn't try it out. I didn't know if I was getting the right um, shade or not. So I'm going to try this side with a brush and just kind of see what it looks like. I, I don't know if I put too much on there or not enough. We'll just see how that kind of looks. I think I didn't put any up here. I'm not going to tap some of this on where I've got that discoloration just to kind of get a more seamless application. And I am, I've had people ask, you know, what kind of lighting situation do I have? I'm not doing this in natural light because I'm filming in the basement. It's the room of my house that I have availability for it. 
Uh, I do have a ring light and I do have a box light and my camera does like to auto adjust the lighting. So I apologize for that. So I look a slightly washed out here right now, but I kind of just wanted to see how it was going to sit on my skin and what is the better application method. So you can see that it's kind of softened and it's blurred a little bit. I still have that kind of splotchiness going on in here. I did work out this morning. I washed my face and stuff. I'm dealing with these poor choices that has manifested into even more swollen hooded eyes. And my face is finally starting to heal up. I don't, I, I'm guessing I just ate something or applied something to my skin that caused a reaction because I did have a little bit of breakout and those are almost healed up. This is a damp elf sponge that I'm just tapping in and I'm just kind of going over it to make it kind of smooth out. I'm gonna go back into a little bit more. I just grabbed a little bit with the sponge this time. I like using sponges, especially when I'm using a thicker product because I think it helps distribute it. Let's give it some assessment here. First off, I think it did blur a little bit. I don't feel like I've got like a huge amount of glowy radiance. Like I don't have that gold shimmer that sometimes you get with certain illuminating foundations. I just feel like it's, it looks like my skin. So I think if my, I guess my initial thought is, and, and do I can tell the difference between one and the other? Um, not really. I feel like this side, because I use the, the, um, the damp beauty blender, feels like it's slightly more sheer than applying it with the brush. I did use kind of two layers on both sides. I feel like I need a little bit more coverage in certain areas. I suspected that would happen. So I also picked up the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. Sorry, I should have been holding this up, but I had to read it. I, I do have a powder foundation that I really like. That's the Bare Minerals. If you are a lady of a certain age, I can actually say a little of this buffed into whatever problem area you're trying to minimize discoloration for can be fantastic. However, if you don't buff the holy hell of it out of it on your face, it could settle into extra dry places that we don't necessarily need. So a little bit, buff it really, really, really well, and then build as needed. That's my, my tip on that. But I actually really like it. When I first tried it years ago, I'm like, oh, I have dry skin. I can't use this. Knowing that I like that, let's try this Fenty one. I think the shade that I got here is probably too light for me. So I'm just gonna use it as a, like a concealer anyway. What did I say I got? This is shade 230. And I think I went by the description. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit with a brush here and we're gonna try it on some of that discoloration first. I'm waiting for it to magically disappear. And that's okay, actually. I think it, that helped quite a bit. Here's the thing. I, I don't think it's important for us to be perfect. I don't think it's important to have absolutely flawless, smooth skin. I think that's ridiculous, frankly. I'm okay with the, that there's been kind of a move away from a kind of a mannequin look. I didn't ever buy into it. I don't really like full coverage foundations anyway, but we're going to see how much this foundation just worked in over the top of that tinted hydrator actually works. I'm actually not upset so far. Now I do get uh, glasses marks right here because I wear glasses more times than not. I switched to soft contacts uh, two years ago and I don't like them. So I wear my glasses more than when I did. When I had gas permeable, I love those. So I gotta see if I can go back and get more of those again. I think I like this as a way to kind of go over where I feel like I need a little bit more blurring. Okay, I feel very washed out right now and part of that's the lighting. When I actually look at what I have going on. Like I've gotten a little bit of texture peeking through here. That is also from the um, primer. I didn't use the, the poreless putty primer, which is my preferred. But if I'm going for a your skin but better look, yeah. There's been some other powder foundations that have gotten some a lot of attention recently. This Fenty one is the newest one that I picked up and frankly I only picked it up because I got that tinted moisturizer and I wanted to just sort of see how it was going to look. So I'm going to take this damp sponge and just kind of press in over the top of it. I mean the skin looks fine. It's smoothed out but doesn't feel like I'm wearing a ton of foundation. It doesn't feel bad on my skin. I actually would use this combination. The Ease Drops and the powder foundation, I would use these two in together. That's something that I would, I think, reach for. We have a, a couple of the new products 
So I have the pot of cream blush from uh, Rare Beauty and I don't love it. I feel like it moves the foundation. It just doesn't really feel like it. And it seems so sheer and I don't recall the color that I got, but I just don't really care for it. So I decided to pick this one up and this one is a, a really dark color. Actually, it's called Grace. So it's a very, very dark product. I'm going to try to apply it two different ways. Um, I'm going to put a little bit on my on the back of my hand because the one time that I've used this so far, I just got it a little goes a very long way. So I'm going to start with a little stippling brush. This is actually one from e.l.f. I'm going to try it on one side with um, the brush and then one side with the Damp Beauty sponge. So I'm grabbing just a little tiny bit on this brush. Let's see. I used this last night for the first time and I did a very bold, colorful eye look so because it was date night never really felt I got like a seamless blush application but I was okay with it being softer since I was going with such a dark eye look okay so this actually is probably a pretty color for me but it is so so subtle I didn't do any contouring and I almost feel like I wish I would have when I look at it on my face and like it doesn't look bad in the camera on my face I still feel very flat I don't feel like I've built up those cheekbones that I want here. So I'm, I'm like, I'm stippling it on and then I'm brushing it to kind of blend it in a little bit because I don't want it to be like patchy. But when I look at it, I see, I see patchiness. I don't know that I love this product. What are you, what is your guys' thoughts on this? Do you guys love this rare beauty stuff or are you not so much? Okay. I'm going to take my beauty sponge and I'm going to pick up the rest of it and let's just see if this makes more of a difference. I actually think that might have gone on a little bit better. That looks way smoother than this does. I might even go in with a little bit more here. I don't know that I would tap it right on because it seems like such a bold color, but yet it, if you work it, it will sheer out, which I like. I feel like this is already a better product than the little pot that I have. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I should have brought it in here to show you. The application with a damp beauty sponge is way better. I still wish I would have done a little bit of a contour beforehand, like a cream contour, but we're gonna move on from here. In case you're wondering if I'm giving you my honest opinion, I am because I, I bought it. <laughs> I don't like to have regrets. Okay, so there's that. It's not, not horrible. I don't actually mind it. And it seems to be sitting pretty well on top of that foundation right now. I'm gonna buff it with the brush here just a little bit. Okay, that shears it out quite a bit, but it does look like skin. It doesn't look like makeup sitting on skin. It actually just looks like skin. What else do I have new? I did pick up the Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder. I've heard so much about this. Everybody raves about it. I feel like I'm probably got a too dark of a color though. This is 4N, which is called Neutral. I used it once yesterday and and when i first looked at it i'm like okay this is too too dark of a shade but then when i put it on i didn't feel like it was too dark so i'm going to kind of keep this into that sort of e shaped kind of like what you would do with a bronzer i just don't want to be like fully bronzed up that e3 i should probably keep it out of my hair huh? do you guys hate it when people leave their hair down is it like a pet peeve of yours i got a fit not too long ago and i cut all my hair off I saw a picture i ran across a picture and showed my husband he's like wow your hair was really long yeah it was, it was really long. I'm going to throw a little bit of this up here too, just to kind of blur things a little bit. Wow. Okay. That does actually look really pretty. I normally like to over abuse blush, but I'm going to leave well enough right alone right now because I picked up another rare beauty product. This is her discovery eyeshadow true to myself. The first two eyeshadow palettes that came out, I was like, eh, well. I mean, it looked a little, they reminded me of like these Too Faced palettes that look like that. I don't like this kind of long skinny thing, but that's kind of what the first two eyeshadow palettes look like. This one actually looked really cool because it had a different shape. It still has like skinny, skinny pans and I don't know how I feel about that. But if you haven't seen this yet, I have no, I had no idea. No, I didn't see anybody talking about this, but this top is actually concaved a little bit. It's going to be super hard to show you in the camera. I don't know if you can see, but it's actually kind of got a ridge in the center. I don't, I don't know what that ridge is for, but I thought this was actually really pretty. And this 
interested me a lot more than the previous versions. So we're going to play with this a little bit. There's a ginormous press glitter here in the middle. Once you get past the kind of crusty top coat, it's actually like a creamy type suspension. The glitter feels a little chunky and a little glossy, and I don't know that I'm going to be doing glitter today, but there are uh, some shimmers. So we got that. Let's, you know what? Let's just play with a couple of these shades and see what we've got here. This is a first impression because I've never used this before. I'm going to start with, this seems like it's my more my transition shade up here. Not really peach, not really terracotta. Does she have a name for it? She does. I think that, yeah, they don't, they name things like positive, which I think is what this one is. All right. I did not do an eyelid primer. The reason why is because I like to see how products sort of work on their own because sometimes I don't always put a primer on. And especially if you're going for a softer look, you might not need a primer. Now, primers are great, in my opinion, when you're going for a super bold, colorful look and you don't want the colors to bleed or crease or, you know, you want longevity, you want the punch of color. You kind of build that shade up a little bit. I'm doing this above my crease. Now, I mentioned earlier that I have hooded eyes. They're hooded, they're close set, and if I'm not careful, I can get kind of cross-eyed awfully fast. It's good to be honest with yourself. You know what your challenges are, so then you know how to fix them. That's actually a, a really pretty color. I, I I would use that. Should I do an eyelid primer on one side? You know what? I'm, I've got this Zoeva primer right here. I'm going to put this on the other side and let this set down just a little bit while I'm applying one side. I'm going to end up doing two looks, I think. I mean, it's not super opaque. It's a soft dusting of color, and I think it makes a great transition shade. I like the fact that it's got kind of like a cool plummy color and then it's got one that's a, a slightly warmer okay i'm grabbing this warmer color right here because i think it goes pretty with that peach color that we started with all right you know what that actually blended really pretty all right i can tell you that this is a palette i could use for every day i could use this for work i could use this with glasses I'm trying to build up a little bit more in my crease. I don't want to go overboard, but I want to give myself a crease a little bit higher up than my normal fold. And we're going to drag it down here a little bit to kind of connect it. Try to keep it up because if I go too far down, it'll pull that eyelid down a little bit too. So, okay. I, I'm not upset by that at all. Let's grab a little flat brush. Yeah, I'm going to use this shimmer right here. It's kind of like a, a little champagne -y shimmer. shimmer. And let's just tap that on. You know what, you guys? I am absolutely not upset with this palette. And I feared a little bit that I was going to be disappointed. But I'm not disappointed. I'm not disappointed at all. That lopsided makeup thing going on. I just grabbed a little bit more of that on a little pencil brush. And this is kind of just like what I normally do instead of a heavy eyeliner or a more defined eye just because I want a little depth and definition, the optical illusion, without, you know, having it be like a super hard, firm eye <laughs> look. I don't know what I'm saying here. So this side is kind of starting to feel like an everyday wearable eye look. I feel like, I, I mean, I still feel like I need a little bit more blush. I need some mascara, obviously. I don't have a new mascara to try. I'm just gonna grab the Too Faced Better Than Sex because it's sitting right here. I do have a new mascara. I actually have a couple new ones but I'm gonna save that for another video. I'm gonna do a couple face full ofs with some products I haven't tried before. If you're interested in budget-friendly options, as opposed to like, you know, Rare, Rare Beauty and Dior and Fenty, um, but if you're looking for drugstore versions, I've got a bunch of new stuff that I'm trying out because I've heard people talk about stuff and I'm like, I don't have any experience with it, so let's give it a try. So that's coming up soon. Some times I film a bunch in advance and then I schedule them to go out in advance on like a Wednesday or Thursday. If I get a request though, I try to bump it up and throw in something a little bit earlier. So when the Natasha Denona Zendo full size, the midi Zendo came out, I was so excited. I filmed that, edited it, and posted it the same day that I got it. And I got it up before a lot of the actual real YouTubers. That was actually kind of fun. And I got a bunch of new subscribers because of it. So as my husband saw that, he was like, hey, do that again. Uh-huh. Spend money on your releases. Okay, husband, I love you. Okay, I'm going to grab <laughs> that transition shade that I used before. I'm actually going to do the same thing. 
uh, start with kind of like the same concept because I think that is the transition shade you get in this palette. I actually really like this palette so far. I think we'll be able to take two daytime looks and kind of amp it up to nighttime looks here. Let's just see. Because that's what I would do, right? I would take whatever old makeup I've got on my face from the day and I would tweak it a little bit. It's rare that I... Rare, rare beauty. It's rare that I would actually strip everything off. This eye is the one that I have the eyelid primer on. It's holding up pretty well. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to grab the darker plummy purple color in here this time. So I'm just grabbing the plum color up here at the top. And I'm going to draw in kind of where I want my crease to be. And then we'll buff that out with a little bit bigger brush. This is kind of a firmer, small brush, which I think is better for some applications, but not super great for blending. And let's just buff that in. See how it blends. And again, I do have that Zoeva eye, um, eye base. I like the fact that this palette gives you a warm option and a cool option. Actually really like that. It seems to be building up pretty well too. It's not horribly patchy. A little tiny patchiness, but really not anything that I wouldn't expect. It is a soft shade. I mean, it blends out very, very soft. It's very pretty. Three shades in here that I haven't used yet. I'm gonna take this gold, but I'm gonna take it on my finger. And I'm just gonna press that in, and then we'll go over and kind of blend out the ledge a little bit here. I don't like, I don't mind purples and golds together. It can be a fun combination. I feel like I need to build that purple up a little bit though. Smoke it out a little bit more. And then I'm gonna do what I did with the other one, grab my pencil brush, go into that dark purple again, and that will be my liner. I'm flipping the brush around so that I don't cross contaminate it too much. A little darker, a little smokier, not as subtle and bright. Let's throw on some mascara. A little bit of mascara is on. That always makes everything so much better. I forget sometimes how that makes everything so much better. Now, if I were just working from home, I might leave well enough alone. I do have a little bit of a nude lipstick. I'm gonna throw this on really fast. No lip liner. I haven't tried her any any other products from Rare Beauty. I, I actually can see, see using this. I, I still don't know if I love that blush. Am I gonna jank the whole thing up if I put a little bit more on? I'm scared. That was probably way too much. I guess the question is, is how does it apply over the, the other powders that I tried, like the Dior powder? Okay, that gave me a little bit more saturation. Do I need to go back and like read directions? Do you have to read directions to know how to apply products? Oh, see, that was way too much. This is more of a liquid than a cream. And I feel like it's harder to control. What are your guys' thoughts on this? I need to know. I need to know your thoughts. Okay. I did get another, uh, what I should have told you that lip product that I used. This is an Essence one, I believe. That Essence lip color that I used is a This Is Nude shade 01. And it's okay. Maybe a little light. Probably works better with a darker, smokier eye. I just went over the top of it with the ColourPop Le Bourget. I think that warmed up that lip a little bit better. Okay. Full thoughts on this. Daytime looks. Two different ones. They're very similar. One's slightly cooler than the other. Uh, cooler with the purple, but then you got that gold. I think it's kind of fun. I'm going to take these to date night. So I'm going to grab this raspberry sparkle shade. Let's grab it on a flat brush first. I think it's like a duochrome. When I tip it at one side, it gets like a bronze color. And when I flip it back, I've got this like raspberry shade. So I'm going to pick some up on a flat brush. This is what I would do to go to, to dinner is I would just kind of darken up, ampen up. That shade is unexpected because I wasn't really expecting the duo, duo chrome finish, but man, that's actually pretty. You know what? We're going to try some with my finger too and see how that... Now, and I'm putting on, on top of the other shimmer and it seems to be adhering well. I'm going to grab a little bit of it and drag it down here just for something fun. Maybe, maybe I'm going to grab this because I used this shade over here is slightly warmer. I'm going to darken up that crease a little bit and that outer V because you know I can't leave well enough alone when it comes to a smoky date night. I'm going to grab the lighter shade here. I still got this pencil brush which is now slightly dirty and I'm going to draw that on. That's that champagne -y shade right here that I'm using as an inner corner highlight. Maybe I'll drag a little bit of it up here. That I would I would pass for, for date night. Yeah. Okay. So the only shade I haven't tried is this glitter. Let's put that on top of the gold shimmer that I pressed in on this side. If I don't look like a 70s disco ball. Now, 
some glitters, those glitters are not meant to be used on your eyeballs. So this is a do what I say, not as I do moment. As an adult, you responsibility for your own actions. Yes, I did get that all over. I have far too much glitter going on right now, but I think that gave it kind of a fun date night spin. I'm gonna go in with that darker plum color again that I used on this side, and we will use that to kind of clean up the glitter a little bit, darken up that crease. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna come up here, make it a little bit more of a severe shade to bring up your eye a little bit, and then we'll connect it down here just slightly more. I don't know if you can hear the heavy panting. That's not my husband hanging out here. That would be my female husky who is my willier of the two. I think she's, frankly, I think she's maybe Mal, but not not bad, but like Mal mute. But her papers say that she's Siberian Husky, so I don't know. Anyway, the my AC doesn't appear to be cooperating as much as I'd like it to be, and I think she's she's hot. I need to get her pool filled back up again. Yeah, I would I would do something like this for a date night, especially with that glitter. I think it's a it's a subtle way without going like crazy color. And sometimes date night for me ends up being more crazy color that I wouldn't normally wear. I think this is one that if I were in an office, I could doctor up my daytime look in the office bathroom. You know what? It's fine. Yeah, I'm not upset. This was kind of fun to play with some new products. Didn't necessarily mean to do two looks with this palette, but after kind of playing with it a little bit, it's not, I'm not set by it. I feel like I wish I would have done some contouring beforehand. That blush, it's so soft and subtle, even though I went like a really dark color. I, I think I'm gonna have to play with it a little bit more. You guys, give me your input, feedback on this Rare Beauty blush. I want to know how does it work for you, if it works for you, if you guys have been interested in this at all. The Fenty Skin Tint, yeah, I'll use that, absolutely. The Fenty um, Powder Foundation, I really like. What else did I try that was new? The Dior, the Dior powder. We're putting some more of this on. I thought this was gonna be way too dark for my skin right now. I think it's giving me much more of a closer skin tone look than I was getting before with the with the Fenty. It was a little too washed out. Now I feel like I'm a little bit more, more myself. And it is blending over the top of that blush product pretty well. Okay, you guys, I, I, I'm, I don't know if this is helpful to you at all. It's just me experimenting my first impressions out the gate. I think all of these products I need to play with a little bit more. I don't necessarily like products where I have to read the instructions first. Well, it's fun. This is actually better than I thought it was going to be. Maybe because it's in more neutrals. I don't know. I got two very neutral looks, but it gave me a couple pops of something fun to work with. I like this. This is, this is one that I think you, you know, Sure, yeah, this is one that seems to be perfectly fine. The Dior one is fun. I've heard so many, so many good things about it, and I do like the way it looks on my skin. Now I have glitter in my hair, which is great because I need to wash my hair anyway. Uh, what Something else new coming up here I'm super excited about, the Pat McGrath blushes. I signed up for the early notification, so I'm super excited for that. I, if I, as soon as I get those, as soon as I'm able to order them and get them, I will do a release for you guys like I did with the Zendo palette because that seemed to work very well. You guys seem to be very responsive to that. So I, until I start maybe someday getting things in PR, <laughs> can actually get them and get them filmed and edited it and posted on the day they're supposed to release, which is like ultimately my goal. I will keep trying to purchase things as quickly as I can to get you guys the content you want because ladies of a certain age, we need to know, do things, are things gonna work for us and our lifestyle? And are they good use of our funds because we've worked hard for our coin. All right, you guys, I hope you guys are doing very, very well and I hope you guys are enjoying the weather. And until my next video, bye for now.